Hey guys, welcome back to another really quick tutorial. Um, I just got a request from a couple people on how to on how to do this specific topic, and today's topic is going to be how you're able to fade bricks on events. Okay, so there's a couple of things that we could possibly do here. So for one, I'm going to spawn in a brick here, and so in order to fade out something, this could be in your lighting, this can be a specific brick's property, its reflectance, transparency, it can even be position. Okay, so we're going to be doing a couple things that involves using for loops to kind of change something's either position, we can make it fade in and out, and we're going to be using the word I. Okay, so what I mean by this is, let me go ahead and just insert a script so I can show you. So let's say I wanted to make a disappearing brick. Okay, in order to do this, what I would do, local brick is equal to script.parent. Now, if you haven't watched my previous videos all about hierarchy, Basically, the, the what we're saying here is that we're setting a variable called brick, and we're saying that it's script.parent, okay? So we take the script, I go by the icon, I go left and up, bop part is the parent. So now we're talking about that part, all right? And let's say, I'm going to say for i is equal from, from 0 to 1, 0 0.1, do. Now, in case you don't know what i is, or in case you don't know what a for loop is, Basically, what it does is that it starts from a number, ends at a number, and is incremented by this number. Now, you're probably wondering what exactly is increment. Well, increment is the process of, of increasing a number gradually at that specific rate. Now, what I mean by this is that this number is going to start at 0. So at number 0, print i, which is 0. It's going to add 0 0.1. So now i is equal to 0 0.1. Print i, it prints 0 0.1 increase it by 0 0.1 so now i is 0 0.2 and it goes all the way until it reaches 1 so therefore this should print i 11 times let me just go ahead and add a weight in there okay so i'm gonna go ahead and hit run all right so when i do this as you can see 0 0 0.1 0 0.2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 and then it goes all the way until 1 and then it stops there this goes the same if I were to change this to 2. It will go from 0, increase by 0 0.1, until it reaches 2. So this code runs 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 20, 21 times. I'm pretty sure. 21. All right. And so now what we're able to do, now that we have i, there are properties that go in between 0 through 1. For example, transparency reflectance as you can see if i change the transparency of this to one it fully disappears if i change it back to zero it reappears change the reflectance to one it turns into a really weird thing and i can see literally everything if i change it to one i can't see anything all right and i think that is all i mean i don't think root priority is something the rest is going to be used with vector three which we'll go over today but in this case here's how we do it okay so we have our brick here's our brick right here all we do is that we say brick dot transparency equals i weight 0 0.2 we'll say all right now when i go ahead and run this look at what happens as you could see there's a really nice fade to it and if you wanted it to be faster reduce this number and reduce this number okay so this is going to run about i think a hundred times so fast so that it's a nice smooth fade out and there it is a very smooth fade out of a brick and it's so easy all right and now let's say you wanted to get it back what you would do you would do the same thing so i'll put weight two for i is equal from one because it starts at one we want it to go to zero in order to go from one to zero you need to do negative 0.01 and now watch what happens. Now when I hit run, it's going to do a nice fade out and then wait two seconds. And then it's going to do a nice fade back in just like that. All right. And now when we do this, we can also say while true do smack that in there. Oh, hello. Smack that in there. Do another wait two, And now basically what it's going to do is that it's going to go on and on forever. And now this is how most people make obbies, all right? In terms of like disappearing bricks and all that, they do a method kind of like this and it goes on and on forever. The only thing that you would add is just so you make it that people are able to fall through it, okay? So you would do brick.transparency equals i 
After it fully disappears, you would say brick.cancollide is equal to false. And then when it reappears, you say brick.cancollide uh, brick equals true. Now, basically what cancollide does is that it basically asks the user, okay, do you want to be able to touch this brick? I say no. And when I'm not able to touch a brick, I fall through it. Whereas in here, I say brick.cancollide equals true then therefore I'm not able to walk through it because I'm able to touch this brick. I'm not sure if that makes much sense, but we're just gonna rock with it. And that's how you would do your disappearing brick. All right, now, and just to give you an idea, let me go ahead and just show you one more time. Ah, oh, man, I'm having some coffee right now. It tastes like water. All right, here we go, here we go. Ready, watch this. Goes right back in, and then after two seconds, when it fully reappears, it'll go right back out. There it is. All right. So it's a really easy process on how we could do it. We could do it with so many other things too. All right. So for lighting. Okay. So let me go ahead and put the script inside of lighting here. Let's say that we wanted to do a wild true do that. Not even a wild true do. Let's just say we wanted to dim our lights. All right. Well, we would change quite a few properties. We would change the ambi the ambient. So we would make it black. We would turn the brightness equal to zero. And we would change the outdoor ambient to pitch black. And now our game is pitch black. So let's just say hypothetically you wanted to do that. Well, first thing you would do, local lighting is equal to game.lighting. And now you would do your for loops. So let's take a look. We have 138, 138, 138, and this is a color from RGB, okay, which basically it's a type of value. So we would say for i is equal to 138, 0, 1, do, or I'm sorry, negative 1, because remember, we're starting at 138, going to 0, so we need to increment by negative 1, all right, because we're turning off the lights. Now, what we would say is that we would say lighting.ambient is equal, uh, I think it's brick color dot uh, blah, 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 is equal to color three dot from RGB I I I. So basically, what this says is like, okay, it's going to start at one thirty eight, and then it's go, it's going to go from one thirty eight to one thirty seven, one thirty seven, one thirty seven, and then let's say a couple seconds later, it's going to be at one nineteen, 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 and it's going to get darker and darker and darker. I know that you can't really see it all that well, but uh, once we get into brightness, we're going to change that equal to zero. So once we do that, I'm just going to say wait 0 0.001. And now I'm going to do another one. I'm going to say for I is equal to two to zero, negative 0 0.1 do lighting dot brightness is equal to I wait 0 0.001 for I is equal to, and now over here, it starts at 128. 128 0 negative 1 do lighting dot outdoor ambient is equal to color 3 dot from RGB I I I weight 0 0.001 all right and now let's see what happens so now when I hit run oh wait nope that's bad 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 uh, everything needs to be back to normal there we go. Oh, there we go. Oh, there we go. All right, here we go. Now let's see what happens. I'm not sure if the script will run in the background because it's in lighting. I don't think it will. It doesn't. All right, so I'm sorry. You can't have the script in lighting. I would move it to uh, server script service. That'll do it. And now watch. You see how the game is getting darker? There it is. And it's a nice fade to black. All right. So I know that one's not uh, very important, but now there's one more that's probably going to be worth your while. Let's say that you want to make a game that has fades. All right. So what we would do here, here is let me go ahead and remove this. All right. So let's say I had a GUI and I know that you're able to see my other GUIs, but I'm just going to make a regular one. And, you know, I'm going to put a frame. So here's my frame. I'm going to make it huge, all right? It's going to take up your entire screen. And now I'm going to put a script inside a frame here. Or, I'm sorry, a local script. We, you don't want this to happen to everybody. 
So you would put in a local script, okay? And let's say that you want a fade to happen once somebody touches a brick here, okay? So this video is actually going along, going along way longer than I thought, but this is now the meat of the video. This is my point. So I'm just going to say, you know, event brick. I'll just call it that. So I'm going to say local brick is equal to event brick. Oh, game.workspace.eventbrick, sorry. Brick.touched, connect function, hit. So basically what we're doing here is that we're detecting when the player, t when someone, t when something or someone touches the brick. Now when I say local humanoid is equal to hit.parent find first child humanoid, basically what this does is that it uh, um we're, what we're doing here is that we're checking to see if the something or someone that touches it has a humanoid okay so if it exists okay so this script will only run uh if a person touches it okay now if humanoid then now we need to declare a couple more things okay we now need to get the player from the character so to do this we say local player is equal to game dot players get player from character hit dot parent so the parent of our hit is going to be our player or I'm sorry our character and basically we need to take that character and find our player because that's where our what's called player GUI is and now local player GUI is equal to player find first child player GUI and now finally what we say is that we say local uh, frame I'll say is equal to player GUI dot screen GUI dot frame. All right, now basically what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna rename this to screen GUI two because I have two other GUIs. So the screen GUI two dot frame. Now in this frame here that I have, I'm actually gonna make it black. So the background color is black. And now basically what we're gonna do is that we're gonna use what we learned today to adjust the transparency of this brick, of this frame, I should say. So there should be transparency somewhere. I don't know, maybe I did it wrong. Nope, background transparency starts at zero. We're gonna make it 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 1. So it's just like that fade that we did earlier. Okay, so now that we have our frame, so right now we're gonna make it invisible, right? Because we don't want the show all the time. We say for i is equal to one, so it starts at one. We're gonna go to zero, and we're gonna decrement by zero by negative zero point zero one. We're gonna say frame dot background. I'm not sure if I'm. I'm definitely gonna spell this wrong. Trans. Oh, uh, there it is. Uh, transparency is equal to i weight. 0.01 and so that'll get the fade so that'll make it black now we need to make it transparent so we just do the opposite so from 0 to 1 we're going to increment now and I'll give it a one second fade 0 0.01 and now that should do it so now this should be a brick that when we touch it it's going to go ahead fade our screen to black and then it's going to, after one second, it's going to bring back our screen. Let's go ahead and let's try it out. Bop. And as you can see, this is a, oh, wait a minute. Oh, no, I was right. I think it's just taking a while. Oh, yeah. So this is, so this is what happened. So with our, with our touch brick, I ran it multiple times. So basically what it's doing is like, oh, you touched the brick. Okay, I'm going to start. Oh, you touched it again. I'm going to start over and run it at the same time. So this is what this is why debounce is important. Okay, so I'm going to say local debounce equals true. If debounce, then debounce equals false. All right, and then this is a concept that I'll probably do in a future video because I don't want to get too much into it today. I'll say wait there, and then I'll say um, debounce is equal to true. Basically, what this does is that it doesn't allow you to touch the brick multiple times so that it glitches out like that. And now last thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add a zero because it was taking way too long. All right, let's see, let's see how it looks now. All right, now this should be the final try here. I'm going to hit it. And as you can see, it slowly fades to black. Like I said, uh, what's going on? 
wow, it is taking a while. It's taking way longer than I thought. There we go. Almost. So, I mean, you could do like a sleeping thing like, like this, like you're falling asleep. But that's taking way too long. We need to make it faster. So to make it faster, I would just remove one of these, uh, one of these zero. So, oh yeah, it's doing it a thousand times. We only want to do a hundred times. So a hundred times should be pretty fast. All right. It should be approximately a five second, five to 10 second fade here instead of a 100 second fade. There we go. There's the fade. Wait one second. Oh, I forgot to take away the zero. Whoops. So we need to take away just one of these zeros right here. All right. So once again, just to show you, the official uh, outcome is going to be this. So I touch the brick, fades to black. And like I said, you're able to fill this up easily over here. And then it fades back out. Ta-da! Wow, that was a really bad ta-da, but okay. All right, and so, yep, that'll be all. So, I mean, this is how we do it. It looks like a complicated script. Um, the more difficult part is this. You just need to go, you just need to know get player from character. But other than that, we basically used hierarchy to find our frame. And we used our for loop that we learned today to execute the script. All right, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys in another video. Bye-bye.